This is called Empire's SMP, A History of Easter Eggs. I have no idea what this is going to be like. Stardew streams are so relaxing, the best vibes. Hey, the best vibes. I'll show you Norman at the end. Oh my gosh. My little egg. Right, here we go. Everyone loves a good Easter egg. And we do. And Empire's SMP is jam-packed. When Zana first started appearing around Empire's SMP Season 1, you know, back in the late summer of 2021, Joey Graceffa was absolutely entranced by the deal. He was. Falling in love with him. Almost immediately. So when Joey learned that Lizzie the Ocean Queen and King Joel of Mizalea were getting married, he knew he would have to ask Zarnoth to be his wedding date. After building a shrine to Zarnoth under the Lost Empire, Empire, and sacrificing some salmon in the blood circle, Zarnoth appeared in front of Joey, and the Lost Emperor requested the demon to be his date to the royal wedding. While Zarnoth claimed he would go to the royal wedding, he didn't claim that they would be there um, together, per se. While Joey was slightly worried that, you know, Zarnoth had someone else in his life, he still planned to confess his love for Zarnoth during the wedding. Thankfully, Joey had asked to officiate the wedding at the Church of the Blood. What a good episode! Episode. Joel and Lizzie there I am. Together. There I am. Best man. Oh my gosh. Looking good in the suit. Oh my gosh. Bro, what a day. What what a day, man. What a day. Joey made his move, declaring his love for this demon in front of the entire server. But to his embarrassment, as far as he could <coughs> tell, Zonath wasn't even at the wedding and even logged out right as Joey expressed his love. Awkward. See, little did he know that Zonath was actually there to support Joey at the wedding. If you watch the wedding from Joey's perspective and just squint hard enough at the armor stand on the right side of the church, you can just make out that Zonath was actually there. While Joey was upset, it was kind of weirdly wholesome <laughs> that Zonath was, you know, still showed up on that day to support Joey. Strange. I know. False symmetry story- wait, 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 wait. Was that an Easter egg? Or not? Did, did we tell people that he was there? Or not? I can't remember. Because obviously we knew that he was... Well, no, we didn't. We didn't know he was there. Oh, my gosh. Um, Did everybody know or not? <coughs> <coughs> I can't remember in that episode if, like, we turned and he was there or something. I don't I actually can't remember. Um, Was, was that a thing or not? Because if not, that's a good Easter egg. That's a good one. Because he was there. Um... He, he he was he was he was at the top of the church. That that was that is a good. Uh, it was kind of weirdly wholesome. That sauna. He, he was actually up there in in the church. Um. So, good Easter egg. Nice. Strange. Here we go. Oh, no. False symmetry story for season two has been a uh, super weird. To say the least. A backstory goes that the great architect was actually from an entirely different world. Like. Entirely. Empire's fault. Thanks, Luna. Claimed to have fallen asleep and then woken up in the Empire's SMP. You know, simply reawakening in the world of Empires. Although False once wore her steampunk style from clothes from a dead body. Ew. Jeez. Might I add, the outfit she wore at the beginning of the season perfectly matched her Hermitcraft skin. As we later find out, Hermitcraft False actually traveled to the Empire's False, you know, just to spy on her during the crossover. See, Empire's False was actually a clone of the real False in the world of Hermitcraft. See, while clone False, you know, started out acting quite normal, you know, kind and caring. Everything just changed one day for the clone. And False had no idea why. Clone False started creating havoc on the Hermitcraft server. You know, killing people, blowing things up, and specifically being a nuisance to Hermit False. So False did what any reasonable person would do. She locked her clone up and looked for a cure for her sudden madness. After the clone managed to escape and destroy False's lab in the process, False was left with no other option but to wipe out the clone's memory and send her to the world of <coughs> empires through the rift. See, come to find out, the clothes that False initially, you know, stole from a dead body were actually just clothes that Hermit False sent through the rift for her clone, along with the cow that turned into 
raw meat for food. False scent. Her clone, one final message through the rift. To try and rejog, you know, the good part of her memories. As she doesn't want to leave the murderous false alone in the world of empires with the rest of the emperors. But you know, one day, who knows when, false might just have to deal with the clone herself. Back during the beginning of- I don't get it. I don't get it. I just want number plus number equals this number. That's all I want. I bet it's amazing lore, by the way. I, I haven't kept up to up to date with it. I don't know if that's an Easter egg or anything. My brain can't take much. And too much lore sometimes for me is... I, I can't comprehend. I can't comprehend. You know, one plus one is seven. That's all I want. Season two. The Great Witch <coughs> Shelby was uh, struggling a, a lot, like like a lot, <laughs> to cast spells correctly and restore her witchcraft credibility for the Great Witch Academy. But it needed some villagers to trade with for her empire of Evermore. Shelby casted a spell that would create a forest sprite villager. Shelby described the spell as wow. some kind of old magic. That That's Groot! That's Groot! from an ancient That's civilization Groot. of people who disappeared long ago. This description matched up perfectly. Empires? Crossover with the MCU. How could I not see this coming? Jeez. What? With the gnomes from Empire Season 1, <coughs> who disappeared over a thousand years ago when their home was destroyed by Zana. Shubble's character for Season 1, Shrubberry, was the only known gnome to actually escape Zarnath's corruption, having made her way into the world of empires. Back to Season 2, the Grey Witch continued throughout the season, having strange occurrences that kind of implied that the Empire of Evermore was actually haunted. Come to find out during Episode 16 of her series, as the Great Witch finally made her way through Evermore's thick fog and found the center of the mangrove forest, the Evermore itself was actually a resting place from the gnome realm after it was destroyed by the demon. As confirmed by Shelby having a vision of the destruction, Shelby even found a note requesting Shrub to follow the gnomes through the portal. Shubble concluded that the fog of Evermore Aww. was actually the lost souls of all the gnomes that. that were lost and the ones who once lived the there, old which mushrooms. explained the hauntings. And she even came to realize that the spell she cast to summon the sprite actually pulled up one of the lost souls into the wooden body of her hey, that's pretty cool. sprite. She will now plans to help the gnomes to get their bodies back by creating more forest sprites. So, you know, what started as a small callback to season one has turned into a major part of Shubble's story for season two. That's pretty wicked, as a witch would say. See, despite being known- That is like pretty wicked. Oh gosh, here we go. Joel love lore. Uh, Joel loves lore, everybody. So, strap yourself in. Here we go. God of law. Joel doesn't usually have a bunch of law. Every once in a while, oh. he will typically throw some law in. <coughs> you know, his viewers that like that sort of thing. See, as it stands right now, the Empires of Stratos actually does have a little bit of law. As Joel describes in episode 15 of his series, Joel was not the only god that lived in the land of Stratos, but all of the other gods somehow mysteriously passed away due to some uh, unknown reason. Joel planned on building some temples to honor the deceased gods, two of which are actually huge references to gods across Bro, SMP history. He's the too first good at temple building, Joel man. built was the Temple of Peril, he's the so ten good. for six goddess of farming. Peril, as in P E R I L, as to avoid, you know. Stepping on mythical sausages' toes by his Saint Pearl law. Then, Joel brought back the best cult of all by constructing a temple of Jeremy. Jeremyism! 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 Everything that he saw, Jeremy. And, um, sat at a whole religion based around what Jeremyism! Jeremyism! Sounds familiar? That's because this is an in your face <coughs> Easter egg from the X Life series, where Joel founded an entire religion of Jeremyism after he had a vision from the original. Original Jeremy. Joel even based the temple of one of his builds from the X Life series, likely his Jeremyism town hall. I like Jeremyism. Oh, hail Donkey Jeremy! Another amazing Easter egg was the amazing, carefully planned foreshadowing that went into.
into revealing the Orion sound as the 13th member. You all probably know by now. Ollie's character originally came from the Afterlife SMP and settled in empires long before anyone had even got there. During the first leg of his journey, Ollie had a dog named Sausage after his friend that he used to have in the afterlife, Mythical Sausage. But the dog was unfortunately slain by the hands of a warden. Ollie built a grave to Sausage to honor his trusty companion. After deciding he wanted to speedrun Minecraft, Ollie, along with the help of speedrunner Crytek Zeus, slayed the Ender Dragon in the wow. world of empires. Months before any of the other players even joined the server and arrived there, Ollie spent <coughs> the next several months sifting through the Minecraft credits. And when they were finally over, he had resurfaced in the world of Empires Season 2. If you have a good memory, then you may recall that Ollie was actually teased multiple times in the lead up to Season 2. He was, was originally he? teased in Empire Season 2 in numerous different ways. For one, Flip called a server-wide meeting at the beginning of the season. After he had discovered that the end portal was already activated, the players would enter the portal only to discover that the end dragon was already dead. Cause uh, you know, Ollie killed it. There was also the Empire's SMP mood board, tweeted by Joel with 11 players, represented that was so along good. with two question marks. Those two question marks being, of course, false symmetry and the Orion sound, as confirmed by Ollie in a response to one of my own tweets. But one of the sneakiest hints of the Orion sound joining Empire Season 2 was when Mythical Sausage, during episode 10 of his Season 2 series, stumbled upon Ollie's base camp alpha in the ice biome, where he made the grave for his dog several months before. S Sausage was obviously confused I didn't know this. with this grave that had his name on it, but now we know why. It's great to have you on the server, Ollie. Even if you still haven't uploaded episode three yet. He has, he has now. He, look, it's right there. It's right there. He, he, he has, he has done it now. He's, he's, he has uploaded it. Um, man. Easter eggs. Easter eggs of empires. That was great. That was Prismarina's video, by the way. If you haven't subbed to the channel, do it.